Hi everybody, I'm Allison Kent, owner and creator of The Home Kitchen, a site for musings about food and gatherings, artisanal kitchen products, and kitchen design. And we are celebrating International Women's Day today. And I'm interviewing nine amazing women. Oh, bringing one in. Um, throughout the day, every hour, insane. And we are talking right now to Karen Algersma. Hello, hello. So I'm just going to introduce you as the media queen. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you do a much better job of explaining what all that entails than I can. But I have met you through Edible Vancouver Island Magazine, which we're going to talk about some exciting, exciting things. But why don't you take a second to uh, tell us about you? What about you? National Women's Day. I love this day because I really believe that um, when women celebrate women and mentor women and support and help women, the world is more beautiful and not. Thank you for doing this. Um, yes, I I have two two media. Uh, uh, I should say crowns. I wear crowns. Uh, Common crowns. <laughs> a media production company. A little. Uh, fantastic video production company called Karen Algerzo Media or Cam. And you can see my painting in the background that my very talented uh, um, friend, uh, Rose Cowles did for me. And then I also edible Vancouver Island magazine. So yes, we have, um, we have, we do video content. We, we, we do video content on um, anything from you know, website videos to um, event promotion to profile videos, but we do it through the eye of storytelling. So our passion is to tell your story or to find a way to get the story um, really uh, rich in the video. And then of course, Edible Vancouver Island Magazine is all about celebrating the stories of the farmers, uh, the artisans, the, um, the, the, the little local gems, like yeah. the little, like, we might not have heard about this person if it weren't for Edible, just opening up their doors to like the, the little gem people, because lots of big companies and big farmers and big whatever can afford big ads and big magazines and fair enough. But you source out those like eclectic little amazing treats and treasures. I have been passionate about telling stories since I was a girl. But what I realized was that the best stories are the hidden stories. They're the ones because most of the most the, the most of the unsung heroes in our culinary world are the people that are so busy farming and fishing and creating and designing um, that they they don't have to they don't have to tell the story. They're busy doing that. And so our job is to discover them and to look in and listen and hang with them and then find a way to get their story out in the most authentic, richest way. So sometimes that's through, often is through our print magazine, through doing a gorgeous um, uh, print story um, or recipe. We also love a recipe. Um, yeah. Also, and, and incredible visuals. We have some of the best photographers on Vancouver Island. Um, and actually, we, we work with photographers all over British Columbia, but... Um, and I'm talking to one of them later today, actually. Are you? That's so exciting. Danielle. Talking to Danielle later today, and I know oh. she's done some covers for you guys. And, so, uh, and yeah. same thing, she, just, she uses a photo to tell a story, and you put it all together into a story, and you put the words to the story, and then everybody's still just, they're there to tell stories. They are. And you know, I find that when you, when you just pause, and you pick up a... a like a real old school print magazine, and you sit back and you just start reading some of these stories. You you forget about all the crazy in the world, and you just sort of fall into that beautiful place that you, you're learning and leaning in and hearing about what these people are doing. And it it's not only inspiring, but it connects you. It yeah. connects the food um, and the food experiences you can have so that when you go to the farmer's market or even when you go to the grocery store and you see a package of Vanco Vancouver Island sea salt, you're like, I know that story. Yeah. I don't know where that sea salt came from. I'm going to buy some because I, I not only know the story, but I know how that sea salt is going to pair beautifully with my local food because after all, it's local salt. And, and because of that, everything's richer, everything's more delicious. And, and then you come home and you tell your whole family or whoever's around your table, like, 
okay, this sea salt, let me tell you a story about the sea salt. And everyone loves it. And stories continue. So that's what we love to do at Edible Vancouver Island. And then having Kim as our, our sister company, we can do it through video. And um, and that's a lot of fun too. And in fact, we love when we can do both. When, when we can take our camera, our, our still camera and our video camera, and we can write a print story and do the BTS or the behind the scenes video. And it gives everybody like a multimedia experience. Yeah. Well, and everybody, as I learned when I homeschooled some of my kids for a little while, everybody learns differently and everybody absorbs information differently, right? So some people just need it in a video format. Some people aren't good with words like me. <laughs> I draw pictures for a living because words are not my thing. Yeah. And I do live interviews instead of writing interviews because words are just not my thing. Although I think I've written, I had to write a bio for you guys for the next issue. And I was like, I struggled. <laughs> I couldn't even write the bio. <laughs> but uh, that's some people's gifts and some people are drawn to words and some people are drawn to pictures and everybody absorbs information and stories even in different ways. And it's beautiful that you have all those formats at your disposal to use for whichever story you're telling today. And I also think it allows us to get to get the story. So we were just we just did a profile on Lori Joyce, who has this incredible company called Better With Ice Cream. So she's making ice cream. But what's really cool about her story? She lives on a farm, and and that was the farm and growing up on a farm that inspired her business. So it was super fun to have the video camera along for that one and get her out like feeding the goats because she used to be like the rock star of a celebrity TV show called The Cupcake Girls, and to see her like out there feeding goats and then going back and making ice cream really helps you understand her whole story. So you read the print article and get curious, and then you go to the QR code and you watch the video and you see that sort of, you know, that more in depth. And yeah. so it's really fun to pair them together. Yeah. It's a great tool. I was, um, I think it also helps as a cook, it helps you to respect the things that you're using in the kitchen and to want to use the whole thing because now you have that extra layer of understanding who grew it or raised it or whatever and who planted it and who had to harvest it. And when I was at cooking school here at the Northwest um, Academy, it was all about head to tail. So each week they would bring in an animal and you are now gonna work with that animal from head to tail. And it was an amazing way to look at cooking because you like, you're taking it now to the extra dimension that now you are meeting the person that raised that pig or raised that fish or whatever went and caught that fish or whatever and it's actually it's kind of layering in that extra bit of information that you're now going to take to your table and you're now going to feed your humans with it and you're now going to tell them like oh yeah did you know that this fish was caught and i read that in edible magazine and they've given me the background and man i didn't know you could just catch whatever fish is right off the shore here now yeah. i know and it's just arming people with information but in such a great way that it's told like a story that you're just kind of getting excited about it in that way. Well, and you know, as we celebrate International Women's Day, what's amazed me as we've gone out to search out those hidden gem stories um, and get curious and find those people that wouldn't otherwise have their story tell, I can't believe how many women are doing cool things in the world of, 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 of culinary right now. It is unbelievable. Yay and to all the women. Yay. <laughs> It's unbelievable. They are, um, they're, they're doing so many interesting things. And one of the things I've really noticed in the last two years, like a trend I've really noticed, is how women are really trying to figure out how they can do things that is kind to the planet. So whatever it is, whether they're making jam and selling it at the farmer's market, like there's this really cool woman I met who um, loves pickling things. Like she is a pickler. And so she... Um, felt bad about that. Like, you know, you put pickles in a big jar and we know that often those jars get recycled, but sometimes they don't. So she has this like whole thing where she get like this like little passport. And if you return the pickle jar, you get like 75 cents off your next jar of pickles. And like, we are best at our family with these pickles and we have our little card and like, we'll don't forget your card on your way to the farmer's market. So, so I love the way uh, so many women here on Vancouver Island, the Gulf Islands and all over the world, but fr from our point of view, the yeah. story we're telling, how many women are not only doing very innovative, very interesting, very delicious things, but they're doing it in a way that is better for the planet, better for people, healthier, safer. Yeah. And I find that so inspiring because it's not easy. It's no. easy 
easier to just do things like, you know, simple and, and, and wasteful, to be honest. But have you ever known a woman to just do the easy thing? Come on. No, I, <laughs> no. I was just talking to um, Kendall Jackson Winery down in California. And we're like, women are just kind of naturally prone to find problems and attempt to solve them. That's just part of our DNA. We do it when we're raising kids. We do it when, like, throughout our life. We do it in our careers. There are always problems. And women are just somehow bred to fix them all. And that's just how we're built. And I think it does lend that extra layer to all these industries, and especially the food and beverage industry right now, which has had a time the last two years. And who knows how it's going to have to evolve in the next couple of years. And I think women are just going to rise and rise and rise in that because yeah. they just love but to you, solve problems. You know what's interesting, Allison, as you are going to be featuring our first ever design issue, which I'm so excited about. Um, so Edible Vancouver Island's first design issue is going to be coming out in a month. And one of the things that I love about this issue is the designers are finding, the, like you, those innovative ways to use, for example, vintage um, uh, vintage things, things, that's not the right word, props, let's just say. Vintage, we're vintage right up here, vintage over here. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I love that because what it does is you are now taking items that would normally go to the, the landfill or, or, you know, collect dust in someone's basement and you're repurposing them and making them like not only like beautiful on the table, but you're actually making it better creating something better so so by being innovative by thinking outside the box in order to try and reuse things rather than throw them in the garbage you're actually creating something in my opinion is is funkier cooler mm -hmm. more clean, more playful um one of our uh one of our contributors for the for this issue actually did that they they, they teach taught people how to set a table um using kind of what you have modern things things that, that you have in your house and weave in those vintage things and do it in a way that's interesting and fun and playful. And, and I, I absolutely, uh, Ashley and Patricia did that. And I absolutely love this article, but I mean, yes, Allison, I, I'm sure you could speak to that. that oh, like what you can do with an extra piece of quartz in the hands of a famous artist, right? And you're like, Hey, here's a spare piece of quartz and amazing. Somebody was commenting on another post that it looks like I burn all my food and I'm fine with that because this stove is fire and it creates fire. So it still is appropriate, but look what you can do when you're just creative and you're using spare bits and pieces and making things happen and making things work. And I, I love the whole concept of it. My house is definitely an exercise in how to merge vintage and modern in a hoarding kind of way. <laughs> it's really, to me, it's so exciting because what we're doing is we're making, we're creating trends, we're inspiring trends that actually will help save um, our planet. You know, I mean, I, I, that's a big statement to make, but it's true. And I, and I feel like um, that will inspire people to go out thrift shopping instead of going. And we, we, we also want to support our businesses that sell new things because um, it's important that we, you know, new artists are coming up with new beautiful things that mm -hmm. are original. We want to support, support those potters or those artisans that are creating love and then combine them with things that have been created. And that's what I love about the, the culinary world right now is I'm seeing such innovation. And, um, but I think that the, 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 the other thing that's really fun, and I really want to inspire women um, to help other women and support other women is find out who are the people in your neighborhood, but who are the women in your community creating one of a kind mustards or, or, um, or selling, um, you know, uh, some people it's spices, other people it's, um, um, you know, homemade taco shells or, or whatever it is. Find out who those people are and really intentionally seek them out and get them to be part of your daily culinary experience. Whether it's that you discover them at a farmer's market or you actually source them out. Like there's so many places like in Victoria Niche Market and, um, and places like that that carry a, a plethora of artisans products, but find those products and support those people. Because in order for them to continue to thrive as female entrepreneurs, they need our support. And that is one simple way you can do it. But I'd even take it a step further, find out their story. So find out who they are and then find out a little bit about them. Because not only will that experience be richer for you, but you can share that with, with, with two other women. So you know what? 
I discovered this ice cream, better with ice cream. It is the best ice cream I've ever had. And in fact, I've had a hard time with eating ice cream because it's upset my tummy. This ice cream does not. And tell two friends, because by the way, you're supporting a single mom who's working her butt off and creating something beautiful, important, local, and good. And, and, and those, are, those are things we can do not only to support women, but to keep it going because they're not gonna continue to be able to make these delicious artisan products um, if we're not there to support them. And um, whether they're fisher, fisher mongers, fishmongers or um, farmers or, um, or creators, we need to find out who they are and then we need to go out of our way to make sure that we are there to cheer them on. And then the last thing I would do is let them know. I mean, honestly, the best moment for me is at the farmer's market when I come back to a stand and I'm like, oh my gosh, okay, your mustard, your sauce, <laughs> Mustard literally has been like we ate the entire jar this 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 week, yeah. and or um, maybe a farmer. I had a farmer give me a recipe on how to use um, I can't remember what it was squash or some a different kind of squash I never used before. And I come back and I'm like I tried that recipe and it was amazing. But having those conversations with those female um, uh, entrepreneurs that are doing really brave hard things in order to create one of a kind. Um, products that we support in the culinary world and then giving them that feedback is that all yeah. what they need they need us to support yeah. them by buying their product and celebrating their product and sharing it and like you said because we're the we're the lovers of food and wine it is our calling to go find them they don't have time to find us they don't have time to be on social media 24 7 and further to your other comment like also get to know the media people around you who are passionate about storytelling make friends with an amazing photographer who just loves telling um, stories through their photography or through their video or through their writing or whatever and those kinds of partnerships lead to beautiful things too because you you can sit there and all you women that are making beautiful stuff just talking to each other well yeah. there's still nobody telling your story so make friends with the you know that veteran media people who are like practiced at this and know how to tell a story, make friends with the person that just graduated college and yeah. barely knows how to hold a camera, but yeah. just is passionate about it. Right. Well, it's, it's that next layer. Study show that when somebody says, can you help me? It actually activates the part of, of, of the person who's being asked for help, part of the brain that represents happiness. People like to help. And so if you need help because you need photos for your product or you need your story to be shared, or maybe it's your dear friend who doesn't even have time to make that call to Edible Vancouver Island Magazine say, you know, you really should tell their story, do that for them. Uh, because when you when you ask a photographer, a videographer, a writer, um, someone like you, um, who's so generous, Allison, with your time to, can I be part of one of your Instagram live events? Or can I, um, you know, kind of come along with you and watch job shadow one day and see how you do it? Don't be afraid to ask for those people to come aboard to help you get your story up there because women want, we're longing to find ways to help other women. So don't be shy and ask for help. And I'm telling you, you will be as great a gift. You, you will give somebody a gift by asking them for help because it feels good to give, especially to help another woman who is struggling to get, to get their entrepreneurial you know, passions out in the world. And then you know, all the people who get to enjoy that product, because if we didn't celebrate people like you, Allison, who are doing great things, then we wouldn't have all that beauty that you create in the world, right? So we, we need to help them and celebrate them. And then they go up and create all these incredible things that we can enjoy, whether it's, um, you know, uh, a product that we get to eat or an agritourism experience we get to have, or, uh, uh, you know, one of my favorite um, women, female entrepreneurs in the culinary business is um, a woman named Karen, who um, her and her husband own a craft beer company called Category 12. And so, because she's a female, the artwork on the beer is very female driven. It's like there's a stiletto and there's a like woman riding like a scooter. And it is such powerful, sexy beer art. I absolutely love it. And I'm not a beer drinker. And I started drinking beer after I met because I'm like, I got to drink this stiletto. <laughs> and, and and so she has created like um, through her, her narrative and through her artwork, yeah. she has um, and this is probably a decade ago when she started doing this, but she really has been part of creating a whole new craft beer culture for women. 
that has been exciting. And now there's so many more women in craft beer as a result of it. And there's so many women enjoying craft beer and becoming cesserons and, and doing those things. And I love that because why would craft beer just be for guys, you know? So those are the things that we can do as women um, to, to just sort of change, change the, the narrative and inspire people to not only support women entrepreneurs, but to, to partake in some of the things that they're creating. And I think it's uh, historically, it's just kind of, we're used to having to create our own narrative. So it's just a continuation of that in a way too. But yeah. I think that um, I grew up in Victoria. You actually, we haven't talked yet, but you know my sister. <gasps> All right, your kids and her kids went to the same school apparently because she was here last night. And she's no like, way. oh, you're interviewing Karen? I know her. Anyways, small world. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think the island, every time... Trons are so booked right now. I can't really get that experience yet, but I'm working on it. And I keep trying to come to Victoria to get more experience and going through the Gulf Islands with the yeah. um, photography workshop that we did with Eat Creative last summer or the summer before and um, going through the island, going through different wineries, heading up to Tofino to try the different foods. Like there's so much food and beverage culture happening right. on the islands right now. It is insane. And I'm so excited about it. I can't wait to be exploring more. But your magazine must have like unlimited potential for stories. Oh my goodness. Well, and yeah, and, and one of the, what, you know what's really funny is when I was in Nashville on a holiday years ago, I picked up an edible Nashville because there's 94 edibles all over the world. And, and I, it was like my Bible for food the whole week I was in Nashville. That's where I discovered all these great places for brunch and I discovered the Bluebird uh, Cafe and all these really cool places. And then when I discovered there was an edible started on Vancouver Island, I was like, that's so awesome because I remember how much it meant to me to be able to discover those hidden gems, to hear those, read those stories. And, and you know, it's, and I don't say this to flog my own magazine. I really mean it. One of the coolest things about the magazine is our ads. Look how pretty that is. But our ads actually Gorgeous. tell the stories because you'll discover as we talked about those hidden gems, those places that people wouldn't necessarily know about if they didn't pick up the magazine, because a lot of these places, are owned by a chef or um, you know two people who who mm -hmm. who have a passion, and they they have a very small marketing budget, <laughs> and they they don't have a lot of time. And we discover them, we love them, and we come to them. Like, can you be part of our magazine? Can you be part of our brand? And um, and they're excited to do it. And and often it's the first time they've ever had an ad, and and so you won't just discover cool places to eat and drink and see, but you'll also discover. Um, you know, through through some of the ads, some places that you wouldn't even know existed. So yeah, I and I love being able to do that because isn't that what we all want? We all want to go more different and 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 have a you know um, an adventure, uh, especially especially when you do a little bit of traveling. And when I said traveling, I mean that could be for somebody who lives in Victoria going to Cowichan for the day, <laughs> but or the San Peninsula. But yeah, no, there's there's so the culinary world on Vancouver Island is so sophisticated now and so amazing. And there's like, we haven't, we're making olive oil on Salt Spring Island. We're going to do a story on that in our summer edition. We're actually making olive oil. How crazy is that? I so, actually, it is the only magazine that I purposely seek out and I look for. And every time I'm at, I live like half a block from my choices. Every time I'm there, I'm like, is it out? Is it out? Yeah. And that's not the island version, but it still is that anticipation yeah. of something that I know is going to have so much value for me. And even if it is, like you said, even the ads are beautiful and tell a story. Even the stories are interesting to read and introduce you to something that you love. And you've breezed over this twice now, but I'm going to stop you because 94 edible magazines and you are the first and the only. Design issue. We're the first, we're the first edible to do a one of a kind design issue. And all the edibles are, are waiting with bated breath because they, th they all, and you know why Allison, Allison knows why, you know why we're doing I know why. it. Because it drives us crazy when we go into these beautiful kitchens that were not designed for people who are home chefs or who love to cook. They're designed for magazines who, yes. who want to show beautiful, you know, perfect uh, marble 
uh, countertops, but they, they haven't thought, and it's interesting, well, I used to work in television, and every year I would do a, you know, a whole bunch of coverage for all the different home tours that are out there. And I'd always interview the designer, and we'd be in the kitchen, and I'd ask questions, she'd privately say to me, she goes, you know, this kitchen's never been used. And I'm like, what? And they're like, yeah. The homeowners don't actually cook, but they wanted a beautiful kitchen and it made me crazy. And what I realized is people like you and I who love to cook and love to entertain and love to use the kitchen, not just as a place to gather and to make food, but to also have like unique experiences, whether you're, you know, uh, hosting like a, I, we used to, home, we, we, we hope to do it again soon, like living room concerts where we'd have musicians who were just starting out coming to our home. And I'm, I'm heading to Victoria that day. Oh, they're the best. <laughs> Food and put it on our counter. So kitchens are, are kitchens and homes are meant to be designed for love and and to feel embraced, to feel part of something rich, to be able to cook delicious food, to be able to can delicious food. And so this edible uh, uh, design issue is for people who actually use their kitchens and their and and their culinary world. So that's why we did it. Yeah. And I the other. And of that is so many interior designers don't cook. So I, then they're designing. So even if the person that owns the house cooks, the designer doesn't know how to cook. So they don't know which drawer needs to go where. They don't know. They're still working with some ancient kitchen triangle theory that doesn't incorporate your number one spot, which is your prep area. Yeah. And they're just, they're not designing in a way that people actually use and move about kitchens. Yeah. Or yeah. to have the flexibility in a kitchen. Like sometimes for a couple of clients and even in my kitchen here, right behind you, um, design a piece of cabinetry that moves because sometimes you're canning. Sometimes you're doing tons of pasta. Sometimes you're rolling out cookie dough like crazy. So why not have an extra counter when you need it, but also that's your baking, but also it can push in so that you can sit there when you need to. And if you cook, you think of these things. If you don't cook, that would never ever occur to you. No. And so finding a designer that actually understands how a used a working kitchen in a home should actually work and function and still look beautiful. Like I like to think, yeah. well, the lighting's bad right now, but no, it's beautiful. Lighting. You know, you said something that was really interesting. You said kitchens should have things on their counter. You know, like it cracks me up when you see these pictures of kitchens in, 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 in you know, magazines and there's nothing on the counter. I'm like, this is not a kitchen. Like, you, and, you, you know what, who has a kitchen with nothing on the counter? And I, I it's so true. <laughs> And so, yeah, I, I love, I love, Allison, that you're a designer that embraces that and celebrates that and designs with that in mind. And that is what this issue is going to be all about. It's going to be about truly um, creating beauty that's functional, right? I mean, I'm that's the best so thing. excited for it. What Women's Day is all about. We're all so beautiful, but damn it, we're functional. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. We are problem solving, functioning, amazing women. Let me tell you. <laughs> yes, we are. yes, we are. Yeah, no, it's true. So on International Women's Day, I celebrate all of you amazing women who are uh, killing it. And you know, one of the things I want to encourage women to do right now, um, it's a tough, it's tough, it's tough, it's a tough time in the world. And um, is, you know, maybe use International Women's Week. Let's make it a week and not just a day. We don't have enough time in one day. Really think about somebody in your life who needs some love. Maybe they lost a loved one this year. Maybe they're just going through a rough time. Maybe um, they lost something else, a job or, or um, some financial um, situation that they're, they're struggling in. And don't ask them what they want. Don't bring them dinner. Just email them saying, I miss you. You know what? I'm going to come for dinner. What are your food allergies? I just know anything you hate. Okay, great. Tell me a day that works for you. Here's some days that work with me. And just go. Just go. Don't, and when you go, be intentional about bring, bringing something delicious. There's nothing like bringing someone a home cooked meal. And when you're there, be intentional about just loving on them, whatever they need, whether it's just to listen, whether it's to giggle, yeah. to belly laugh, or whether it's to just tell them how amazing they are. And when you do that, then all of us win. So that's my inspiration for all of you on International Women's Day. I love it. And it's your, your new format for paying it forward. It's like paying yeah. the bill at Starbucks. Just yeah. go, just take yeah. some food. Just like yeah. And if, if dinner's too much, then soup. If soup's too much, then, you know, do, you know, homemade cookies, whatever works best for you. The fresh Nespresso pods, those can yeah. be left at my front door anytime y'all want. Absolutely. But yeah, the greatest gift you can give someone is just hang out with them, love on them, give them um, give them, give them some time, give them time and, and really be, like I said, I hate to keep using that word intentional, but intentional 
about giving them compliments and feedback and maybe even listening and hearing if there's something they need and then being thoughtful about how to sort of, you know, maybe they just need some inspiration and send them some quotes for the next couple of weeks, or maybe they need, you know, maybe they need a connection. They need to know who Allison is so that they can redesign their kitchen. Cause I'm the person to do that. Yes, you are. Okay. Tell us when the issue's coming out. Uh, yes, yeah, so our spring issue hits the stands this week. I'm so excited about it. It's, it's live digitally now, and so look for that. And our, um, and our design issue will be out in the middle of uh, next month, and we will be doing lots of social on that, so look for that. It's going to be amazing. Our incredibly uh, talented, uh, our, our, our artistic director, who is also an amazing woman, Danica, is putting it together right now. And Allison, that looks so good. I see her on here. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Um, we're super excited. It is going to be spectacular. And thanks for being part of it, Allison. And thanks for inviting us to be part of today. We're so honored to be here today. You have no idea how high I jumped out of my seat when I saw you put that out that you were doing a design issue. And I was like, what? And <laughs> I think I messaged you guys immediately, like within a minute and a half. And I was like, this is my jam. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm excited. And I'm going to put the details um, on the video yep. of how to follow you guys. And Amazing. Thank you so much for joining me. Yeah. And Danica just, just messaged that she's literally doing the design issues we speak. So the, <laughs> literally, as I watch this, yeah. <laughs> Wednesday, everyone. Bye. Bye.